This video is sponsored by PBR Max. Hey guys, welcome back to another video. A lot of the people have been asking me how I normally go about creating my grounds and detailing them. So in this video, I'll be explaining just that. It'll be broken down into three main parts. The first is the texturing. The second would be scattering the foliage accordingly. And the third is a magic source. We'll be using some 3D scans to detail the ground even further and take it to the next step. So without further ado, let's actually get started. Before we begin with the first step, you really need to sculpt your grounds or mess with the geometry a little bit so that the ground is not entirely flat. You will never see a completely flat ground in real life, so please make sure that you actually sculpt your grounds into your liking beforehand. This video is not about sculpting, so we'll leave it out of this for now, but after you've sculpted, there are two main ways you can texture your ground. First way is by just using one texture and using the displacement and just call it a day because a lot of the ground will be covered in foliage anyway. But if you want to take it a step further, what you can do is take a bunch of textures like three or four together and mix it using the RGB channels paint mask. This process is very common in games and I like to use it every now and then too but if you think that you're going to be scattering a lot of foliage on top of your ground and won't be able to see the ground textures that much then you can just use the first method to texture your ground. But even though I use this method in creating this artwork, I won't be showing how exactly to do this because it's just going to take way too long for this video and it is also out of the scopes of this tutorial. But if you want me to do a dedicated video on that, please leave a comment down below so I would know that you guys want to learn about this. Even though I use this method in this project, I later on covered the ground up with lots and lots of 3D assets and foliage so we didn't end up seeing the ground textures anyway and I thought it was just a little overkill. After we got our textures to our liking it's time for foliage. Again I like to use GeoScatter because it has a big library even on its own without having to purchase grass blades or any other asset packs for GeoScatter it is just great for these type of scenarios. I always scatter one individual system at a time from different biomes and then mix them together later on. It is also great to pull up references to understand how plants and grass grow in the environment you're creating. They can be really helpful in making your environments believable and realistic. I like to use manual scattering mode from GeoScatter add-on because it gives me so much control over what type of foliage I want to scatter at what place in my grounds. I've already made a video on how to use manual scattering mode from GeoScatter add-on before so I really recommend you guys to check it out to understand more about it. This tool can be very very helpful in creating these believable environments with the most control. One tip I can give you with scattering your foliage is to have a gradual fall off. What this necessarily means is that you'll have smaller foliage around the pathway part and then as you go further into the forest there will be bushes, larger assets. This helps you bring in a lot more visual contrast and interest to your foliages. But of course this is nature so try to make it unpredictable every now and then in your scatters. That can mean different foliage around that area or just a different in size around there. Now before we get into our last and the most important step, let me tell you about our sponsor PBR Max. PBR Max is an online library where you can download thousands of textures and 3D assets that can range from Asian themed 3D scans to nature 3D scans which I like to use all the time. The assets come in different LODs and different texture sizes so you can download whatever that suits your needs. The platform is also very flexible and very easy to use. Now you can get their yearly subscription for as low as $2 a month and get access to these amazing 3 scans that they have in their library. 
and make sure to use the discount code LOUX20 to get 20% off of your first purchase. I'm really happy that they're sponsoring this video because I've been using their assets for quite a while and just look at this house and see how detailed this is. That's why for the next step we're going to be using their 3D scans to detail our grounds. So let's firstly go into their platform and find some rocky grounds. Once you find something that you want to download, click on it and click on the plus icon beside the download. I like to just download LOD0 and 4K textures with some textures removed. I just like to download albedo, normal roughness and displacement textures. So just select those and then just click on download. It's easy as that. You can check your download status on the top right corner. But instead of waiting for this download to complete, I'm just going to use something I've already downloaded. So go into my assets and local assets, you will find whatever you've downloaded before. I use this ground scan all the time and I'll be importing that into Blender for this project as well. This process is also as easy as downloading, just click on it, click on the plus beside export, choose what targets, what LODs, what resolution and what textures you want to export and just click on export. And after a few seconds, it will be imported into Blender automatically with the textures together. From here, it's just a matter of placing them at the right spot and overlapping the geometry with the ground. I know, it's basically it. It's that easy. And with the amount of options that PBO Max offers in 3D scans, you can create a unique looking ground every time you create your pieces. And if you think that the colors of the three scans are not matching with your ground, just insert a hue saturation and value node between your base color texture and principled BSDF and tweak the settings according to your liking. Once I'm happy with the colors, I'm going to duplicate it and place it somewhere that I think I might need it. And you can also bring in more scans from PBO Max and place it wherever you need it. It can be bigger and larger stones, can be just tiny ones and forming a rock formation. Whatever that suits your need, I tweak your colors as well so that the ground and the three scans are matching together. And after a while of doing that, you will create your most detailed ground you've ever made. Now sometimes some of the geometry of the three scans will be poking out so you can easily tweak them with sculpt tool, either make them dip under the ground or make them appear above the ground or whatever that suits your need. That basically wraps up for today's video. I hope you guys learn a thing or two from this one and I'll just leave a time lapse of me continuing this artwork at the back and I'll see you guys next time.